Hey guys, welcome back to the D Tour podcast. I'm your host, Dan Jones, as always, joined by four time national road champion from Australia, John Trevoro, and movie star writer Sarah Gigante. Straight in, we normally introduce our guests and do a bit of pre talk, but you're a regular now to the D Tour, and you're a more <laughs> polished version of Phil Liggett. All credit to the voice of cycling, but uh, great to have you on, Sarah, and, and you're back racing, which is uh, yeah, bringing yeah. a lot of delight to everyone that. Is obviously a big supporter of yours. And especially me. I cannot wait. I am so excited for Sunday. I don't think I've ever been this excited for a race in my life. And that says a lot because I'm often very excited for racing. So, yeah, I just can't believe I finally, finally get to race again. It's It's been such a delight the whole past month just getting to ride my bike again like normal. And, yeah, to top it off with my last... Well, my first race, no, my last, definitely not my last race. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, excitement. It's- <laughs> well, we're, we're all excited. I'm very excited that I'm going to be down there on Sunday. So uh, I'm the race director of the uh, uh, Tour of Gifts Land uh, for Car- Karen Jones, who's uh, managed to get it back on the calendar. She's done a fantastic job, actually, Karen. Mm. So uh, chapeau uh, to her. And, uh, she's also the Women's Warnable. And we're going to get her on next week. We're going to do yep. a preview of the Women's Warnable, of the, oh, of the Melbourne Warnable and the Women's Warning, which I know you're riding, Sarah. Uh, yeah, super Karen excited. Jones, I'm super excited. You thought, you well, Sarah was excited. Wait well, till well, Karen gets on. Well, I've been having a holiday. She wanted to come on tonight. I said, no, we're going to save you for next week. I think I stirred her up with something. But anyway, it's all good. But before we talk about the, the tour of Gippsland and how great it is to have you there, can we just go back to, you know, that uh, that time? So you, you started last year terribly with, with broken – three broken bones and broken – broken wait, 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 wait. I can, I can yeah, hang, on. hang on. I started last year very well, thanks, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you did. But let's go on you, Sarah. How <laughs> time he got made accountable for these verbal <laughs> diarrhea. Not talking about your form. We know how brilliant your form was. But with that terrible crash, and you came back from that, not, most people thought you wouldn't be able to recover from those uh, serious injuries, especially the broken leg, uh, to ride your limits. But you did that. But mm. I'm sure at that stage you didn't know about the other conditions. So just tell us how that all worked. With, with your ride in the Olympics, because I think you finished 11th in the time trial, which is a pretty good effort anyway. Uh, but when did you start to realise there was something else wrong? Oh, it's hard to say in hindsight. I know as soon as I got to Spain, which wasn't long because we had to leave Tokyo straight after. I knew as soon as I got there, I felt pretty bad. Like I felt really bad, actually. And it was the first time I... That weekend was the first time I skipped my efforts in like two years, I think. Like I was just like to my coach Dylan Lindsay, I was like, I, I just can't. Like I thought I was like, oh, maybe some jet lag or like I'd read about people getting like a bit less motivated after the Olympics. And I was like, this is so weird because I feel so motivated. Like I was so excited for Norway and Ardesh. Um, I, yeah, I just like was really ready to like keep racing and I'd finally – come back from those injuries like you said and I felt like I trained really hard and I you know I was getting even maybe not like my very best form but I was like definitely like going pretty well I felt so I was just excited to get into the next block and I was like I don't know what's happening Dylan like I just cannot like the thought of doing the efforts I remember I I was sitting outside my apartment my new apartment (laughs) Kristen Faulkner my new roommate like came home from her ride I was just like sitting there, like ready to go for my ride. And I've been sitting there for like an hour trying to get myself to go. So I just felt like pretty, pretty bad for a few days. And then I realized that something was wrong. And after that, I didn't ride for ages. And yeah, I mean, lots of highs and lows in between then and now. But now I feel amazing. Like, it's crazy. I'm so happy. I just kind of felt better one day. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, well, what was key parts of the recovery process? What was it just rest or was there specific things that you had to do? Rest, lots of rest. Just, yeah. I think we said it last time, but I had to keep my heart rate under 100 beats per yeah. minute for so many months, which was quite hard. Like, even <laughs> I lived in Daruna on like the fifth floor and like walking up the steps, I'd be like following Kristen up and then like three stories up a bit oh wait 
gotta gotta slow down <laughs> have a break so it, like I felt all right after a while but it was just a matter of like remembering to listen to the restrictions which I did very well I have to say like normally with like doctors being like oh okay you've broken this like don't ride outside for x number of weeks I really struggle sometimes <laughs> like I, I try to listen but like sometimes I'm like oh yeah like 12 weeks, 10 weeks, same thing. But no, with the heart, like, <laughs> like, I wasn't like, oh, 100 beats per minute. Oh, that's like 110. Like, no, I was like, whoa, like 99, got to stop on this stair. So, yeah, I was very strict um, because hearts are super important, obviously. Everything's important, but I'd say hearts are pretty important. It's up there. So, yeah, lots of rest, taking it easy. I started to ride indoors. And then thanks to, yeah, 99 Bikes Q, I was able to start riding outside on an e-bike once I got back to Melbourne, which was nice. It felt just so good to feel the wind in my face again, even though mm. it didn't feel quite the same. I was able to ride with mum a lot at least, which was nice. And, yeah, I rode out to my club, Brunswick. I rode out to the start of my bunch ride. I didn't do the bunch ride, but I rode out to the start. I was like, hey, everyone. Um, and then, yeah, I guess maybe about Christmas time. It was a nice Christmas present. About then I started to ride a bit more and then I went to team camp, which, yeah, which was so amazing. I was so, so happy to be on Mobby Star. And, yeah, it was really just about then that I started feeling fantastic just, like, overnight. So it was just, like, 2022, can't get much better, right? Just, like, <laughs> even I feel amazing. And now I'm racing again almost. So, yeah, it's going to be so cool. So my, myopericarditis, it's, it, it's uh, inflammation of the heart. How do you get that? I mean, is it something, you know, it's not a common thing. So how did you actually, did you work out how you got it? No, I don't know. And it's too late. I, I won't know. Like we did tons of tests. Don't know what happened. But as long as it doesn't happen again, which they say I'm like no more likely to get it than you. It's just, yeah. it got unlucky, very unlucky, very, very yeah. unlucky. And yeah. Yeah, I'm better now and don't ever want to go through that again, but at least <laughs> now yeah. I love the bike more than ever. You did a great, I think, a, sorry, I was going to say, your great quote, so you don't want to get it. You said, uh, I think it was on Cycling Tips or one of those, you said, uh, about last year, all, all I can say is that broken bones are a walk in the park. I broke three bones, including one of my leg, early in 2021. But that was a bump in the road compared to what happened later. I'm totally fine now, though. I, I love that. I just, just a bump in the road. <laughs> what I was going to say is the last time we had you on, that the overriding says we know you're a positive person, but that just shone through how you deal with adversity, like your mindset. Like that is the mindset of a champion. But surely there was moments when it was when it, it must have been so hard when you're told you can't do what you're passionate about, which is ride your bike. Yeah, I think the uncertainty was definitely the worst. Like it wasn't as much as, okay, you can't do this for this long and then you'll be able to do this. Like with a broken bone, I think why I said that is, you know, like you have a broken leg and the doctors are pretty much able to say, okay, you break your leg because you flipped at quite a fast speed and smashed your leg into the ground and it's, this is what it looks like on the x-ray and this is how long it's going to take roughly. And then this is like the steps, you know, and then you'll definitely be able to do like this by this mm. day, stuff like that. But when it comes to your heart and a condition like this, it's a bit more hard to say, hard to predict. And also like not knowing why I had it, it was all a bit stressful. So <laughs> I'm glad that it's done. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely like more appreciative of being healthy and like I, I love cycling. I think everyone knows that I always love cycling, but I I did take it for granted the fact that I'm able to like do that like every day just push my body to the limit and like train, you know? Like I think we all you take it for granted just being able to ride your back and feel pretty good. Like maybe you're not like racing, but you can like go out there and just do what you want and you don't have to worry. So nope. I think that's something I will not do again. And now I like, yeah, it's just crazy. Like you could write in my training program, go do like 12 hours in the snow. I mean, there's not snow here, but there was snow in Spain. You could mm. tell me, go do 
12 hours with like a billion efforts and I don't know, don't don't take any water or whatever you want to write. <laughs> But like, I would be like, yes, like I cannot wait. So I think that's how I say every day. I'm just like, woo, get to go training. This is the best. And now I'm like, yeah, yeah get to go racing. This is even better than the best. Now, <laughs> now we've got one of the world's best cycling interviewers that's just been sitting in the lobby like a greyhound scratching at the box. Uh, he's been listening with intent for your so. Of course, the voice of cycling, Phil Liggett. He's back on the detour. Phil, what a, what an inspiring story for such a young person. I tell you, you call me an interview. I was sat here there, sir, just listening to you, and you were inspiring me to start cycling again. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you are ready for it. And I think it just reflects your, you have the champion temperament, which you need to be a great success, not just on the bike, but as a person. And you've conquered it. adversity at such a young age. You've conquered it. And you're so inspiring to get out there and do it again now. I mean, you're going to have a great season. That's for sure. Thanks so much. Now, the Thank switchboard you. is lit up. We've got Buster Thomas. He says, great to hear you back on the road, Sarah. Uh, Jethro you. Nagel wants to know, please ask Sarah what her favourite bit of movie star kit is so far. Oh, I know the answer because I've never had one before. And when I pulled it out, I was like, well, I, I pulled out all my kit, like a little kit at Christmas. I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, our sponsor is La Passion, and it's so nice. I hadn't heard of it, but now I'm, like, in love. I'm telling everyone. Um, so my favorite part is this jersey. It's like a rain jersey, you know, like I don't really wear rain jackets because I find like they're a bit baggy. I'm always like, trying to go fast, get the Strava segments. So don't really like like the bagginess or like, <laughs> you know, like, think you, like in your like lower arms. I don't know. I have something against that. But this rain jersey, I've never seen such an awesome invention. Like it's short <laughs> sleeve. And, like, made of this really good material that doesn't make you all sweaty. It's just, like, almost a normal jersey, but, like, great for the rain. So I used it heaps when I was in Spain. Thankfully, I haven't used it here because the weather has been amazing. That's also something I don't take quite as much for granted now because after being – I've never been in Europe in winter, and I don't know how the Euros do it. Like, Oh, <laughs> do I. Euro? <laughs> well, not only your inspiration, your bloody marketer's dream. <laughs> to be uh, loving the passion coming through here. Uh, Janice says, uh, "Hi, Sarah. An afternoon to all." Uh, a LinkedIn user <laughs> that narrows it down. It says, "How's your Spanish, and how does the team communicate during races?" Well, because I was off the bike for so long last year, then I had quite a lot of time. Like I was doing uni, but. Still, cycling normally takes up so much time. So I was like, what do I do with all this time? And I was like, well, I can't improve my cycling for next year by training. I have to listen to the doctors. But I can improve it by, like, learning Spanish because that will help me in the team. So I did try. And I had a really nice friend that I made in Melbourne who's been helping me. And, yeah, I I was (laughs) writing letters to myself, like, just long letters, like, dear Sarah, how are you, like, Oh, hi, Sarah. My day's been great. Thanks, Sarah. Like, yeah, I was like really into it. I mean, I think I've dropped a bit now, now that I'm starting to train more. Well, I am training more. But yeah, I tried my best last year. I really enjoyed it and I'm still enjoying it. When I was at the camp, I was having so much fun. Everyone was my teacher. I was like, please tell me every time I make a mistake, which is all the time, just correct me. Like, I want to learn as much as I can. And in the races, right now, I think they do Spanish and English, but before we have a girl from France, Aud, and before she learnt English, actually I don't know how it works because she also knows Spanish. So maybe when she just joined the team and she only knew French, um, someone was telling me that they used to have the radio in French, Spanish and English all at once. So I'm glad that she's now she's fluent in Spanish and English, which is awesome. Um, so I'm glad it's just two languages now. And I'm also glad that English is one of those because even though I try, I'm definitely not up to race radio. Uh, turn it up. You, let's but not beat around the bush here. You are a super intellectual person. I think you've got a perfect enter score. You'll be fluent in yeah. about two bloody weeks. Let's, two let's weeks. be honest about that. Oh, oh, two months. Good. I'll give it two months. Um, we've got another question from Buster Thomas. He says, Sarah, it seems Movie Star must be very supportive of your situation. Uh I think he's asking, what do they expect of you in Europe? When, when do they oh, expect, when do they you, expect in Europe? you in Europe? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, they've been amazing. Ever since last year when we found out 
that I was sick and yeah quite a bad sickness to have they've been so so supportive like no sense of rushing me at all and yeah even like ignoring the sickness they don't want to rush me in I, I'm still young and I, I can just like feel it like they're really in for like the long term and I love it the whole team's amazing so I think I'll be here for maybe another month or so and then jet off to Europe um, so not too long until I'm back in the UCI Peloton and I'm so excited. Like I'm excited for this weekend. I think that's number one, definitely, because I haven't raced in so long and it's like in three days. Wow, I've been counting down for so long. Um, but yeah, to join my teammates and race alongside them, yeah, that's going to be so incredible. Such an experience. Well, Karen Jones has put the pressure on. She says once she's wow. won the Tour of Gippsland and the Women's Warney. I'm trying to see my radar here. I'm very upset. I haven't touched my bike in so long. Like, everyone yeah. needs to not worry about me. That's it. <laughs> Jiffy? Yeah, I, I, I can imagine that'll be the case. They won't be worrying about you at all. Now, yeah. look, uh, it's yeah. going to be a, a, a fantastic event to Giftland. Start, it, it's all down in that region of Phillip Island, uh, Inverloch, down in that uh, part of Gippsland. So the first stage is out at Woolamai, uh, which is uh, where there's a race course out there. It's not far from San Remo, in between there and the beautiful town of Kilcunda. It's sort of... Ducked in the, tucked in the back there. It's not a circuit. Not a circuit John, event. John, I'm going to have to cut you off. You've made a very, very big mistake. It's the Mitchelton Tour of Gippsland. Oh, oh. so oh, you, dear. Flicked, you flicked oh, Jerry no. Ryan. This, he yeah. could pull the plug on this bloody show at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the I Mitchelton. You had a in front of you. Oh, Mitchelton Tour of Gippsland. Saved you there. Yeah. 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 Okay. I yeah. bet Callum yeah. Jones noted it too, Dan. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right. I've got a, a, a red flag already from Karen. Um, yeah, so yeah. then the second day is out of Inverloch, and it's a wonderful circuit up into those hills at the back of Inverloch. We've raced it uh, before in a Sun Tour and a Tour of Gippsland. So that'll be right up your alley. And then the final one is a... Um, yeah, tour of Gippsland.com.au. Yeah, you can get all the information there. Final stage the Mitchell is a Tour of Gippsland. The Mitchell and Tour of Gippsland. Yes, yes. <laughs> the website, the yeah, websites, sorry. Tour of Gippsland. Uh, and the final stage is in real little uh, uh, town on Phillip Island. Uh, we've got to quit there to finish it all off on Tuesday. So it's going to be great. And it's a good feel, too. We've got yeah. the, the, uh, some really good bike riders in there. Uh, I printed it out, but I didn't. Uh, I can't find it, but I've got it here on my, on my little phone. <laughs> and I'm just looking through it. It's all the best NRS teams. I think there's around about 40 uh, in the ladies' event, which is fantastic. Um, and, and all the, the uh, Australian top teams coming from all around Australia for it. Uh, and a handful of individuals. And you being one of those, Sarah. Yes. So thanks very much, Karen, for letting me race. I'm so excited and I'm very glad Robbie Star also that we race, so thanks, Robbie Star. <laughs> I'm just so, so excited, so happy. Oh, so you're obviously happy that you're racing, but is there still your competitive animal as well? Are you, are you setting any expectations or just being back on the bike is enough? Oh, I think I'm just going to be really happy to be back in the peloton, back yeah. doing what I love. Um, I mean, I'll try my best. I have no idea, honestly. Like, I, I don't mm. even know how my form is. I've, I've been doing a lot of endurance um, just trying to build back a base. So I, I haven't really done that many efforts. So I don't know how I'm going. And it's hard to know. I'm sure everyone's flying from nationals, but I also haven't raced them in like a whole year. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be – I'll see. I'll tell you after like two laps. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going well. <laughs> You'll be able to well, watch it. I'm in the race – Director's car right in front, so I'll drop back and ask you on the second lap, okay? You're not allowed to do that, John. You're not allowed to do the rules of the international cycling. Sarah, will you, will you be conscious of your heart? Will you be listening to it? Do you wear a monitor or, or just get stuck in? Uh, I mean, I, I felt fine for so many months. I, of course, if I feel anything, like anyone, I feel like if anyone felt like just pain in the race, I hope they would stop. So I, I think I'm just like a normal person like that. Like, right. If I felt like I was having a heart attack, I would definitely stop, but I'm sure that won't happen. Yeah. Stuff, I was just going to say, uh, there happens to be a men's race on as well. <laughs> and, is uh, oh, yeah. how the world has changed. 
And, and, and it's a great feel. We've got to read about it. It's about 80, 80 odd starters in the men's. And it's all the top teams, you know, Bridge Lane and ARA, um, Oliver's Racing, you name it, Inform TMX, some bloke named Britton Jones reckons they're going to give it a bit of a nudge. Um, and he probably will. Um, but yeah, a great field. So I'm looking for it. And we've got it under, uh, under 19s as, as well. Um, so yeah, going to be some great, great racing. Well, we wish you all the best, Tara, and we really appreciate you coming on the detour. And uh, I think we might have asked you this last time, but we're a bit further down the track. As we said, you know, you're such a positive person. What can you leave the, the viewers and the listeners with about, you know, staying focused and getting through those tough moments? I think what I like to always think to myself is it's just one day this will just be a bad memory. So whenever it's tough, I just like to think about that. Like one day it will be over and you'll just think back to that bad time or you'll try and forget it either way. But it will be over. There will be better days. And, yeah, yeah that's how I right. feel now. I'm just Great. way uh, better days. Perfect. And that's I have to say thank you so much for having me back on, but I'm a tiny bit disappointed because I listen to this podcast every time it comes out on the ergo. I love listening to this podcast, and now I can't listen. <laughs> Because I, I don't like listening to my own podcast. So. Oh, we'll send it to you. We'll send it to yeah. you. You'll make you listen to it again. Yeah. Yeah. We have. Yeah, I think, I think you did a good job. <laughs> yeah, we have that in common, <laughs> sir. I never play back the podcast either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got yeah. one, one last question for you. Have you finished your uh, – I know you're doing a double degree in, in linguistics and geography, I think that was. Um, is that finished now or have you still got a year to go? Uh, yeah, I'm still going. I dropped down to part time last year, and I'll okay. stay at part time. So okay. taking me a little bit longer, but I'm not in a rush. I enjoy it, and it's I like having the balance. And yeah, mm. it'll be good. All right. Well, we wish you all the best on and off the bike, Sarah. We'll be cheering for you at the Tour of Gippsland and the Warney, and we'll check in again soon. Yes, thank you so much. Love no you, worries, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. joining us. See you. Bye. Bye. Now, it's time for the wow. drinks break. If you how do you want to play this? Because we have the voice of cycling. Do you want to be, ah. just to play the bike exchange little stinger and then we can work out how we're going to do the Yeah, okay. Cycling? Do that. Right. And, uh, yeah. um, now you came get... on to me. <clears throat> you came on to me. It was about 10 o'clock my time last night. Yeah, yeah we threw I've you under the bus. Uh, I've been up just an hour now. Um, I've had one look at this sting and I'm ready. I okay, oh, fantastic. Right. Well, we'll play the bike exchange when we come back. Phil is going to narrate this thing live. It's going to be. Will you give me a cue? Will I know when to do yeah, it? Yeah, we'll give you a cue. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. get it sorted. All right, quick drinks, mate. We'll be back soon. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. <clears throat> it's a bike. 374 people are looking at this guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs. Semi-amateurs. And pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank. And these bars. This could be the perfect match. But not this one. This girl has a bike to sell. And thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace with over 500,000 products and 900 brands where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns, and rides. Thanks again to Bike Exchange. Now, just queue up the video. Bear with me. <laughs> Uh, we've got the Mamu short. Are you ready to go, Phil? Because it'll it'll start whenever you're ready, and then I'll dim down the music and let's just you watch the man. I can leave the music in if you like. Yeah, all right, um, let's go. Mix, mix it at the same time. Show us what it is. Show you like, and I'll find it. There you go. You, you got to talk, Phil. Will you, will you now listen? Oh, sorry, mate. I know exactly what to do. I'm just waiting for you to stop talking and play the tape. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll stop talking and I'll play the tape. And don't worry. Really? Don't worry. Words okay. will come. Words sorry, will sorry, come. sorry. I, I'm a micromanager. You know that, Phil. <laughs> Roll it.
Oh, hang on. I've stuffed the music up. Jeez, this is just... Uh, here we go. It's back and it's time to return to the Tour de France. After COVID, Tour Fever returns in style with John Tavaro's Mummy Tours. You'll ride and you will drink your way to Paris and you will go backstage among the participants and the people of the greatest race on earth. Perfect. <laughs> no, hey, that wasn't bad for time. That was wasn't bad. Came out <laughs> oh, wasn't bad. And <laughs> if you, you've got an update as well for the Giro, there's a package okay, out. Yes, I no, you don't have no, 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 You can have no. a time off, mate. Well, well, this is uh, uh, just a, uh, a one page that uh, uh, Marcel uh, Berger uh, sent me through t today, um, and it's more about uh, so the Giro experience. So nine days, eight nights, from the fourth of May till the twelfth of May, um, and it's going to be sensational. I'm not sure who the um, uh, ex pro is going to be yet, but I'll be there, and my mate Vazzy will be there along with the with the uh, full Moo Moo team, and they do it so well. So, experience the best of the Giro uh, in 2022. Daily rides on the race route to Hungary and uh, over iconic Italian climbs. Watch the action live from the incredible viewing locations. Uh, eight nights, twin room accommodation. Um, experience the opportunity to meet a pro team, ex uh, expert mechanical service and support daily. They, they treat you like a pro. They look after you really well. Uh, immerse yourself in the best of Italy's divine food, wine uh, and Prosecco. I thought Prosecco was <laughs> wine, but anyway. Uh, and then there's a daily uh, 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 itinerary there all the way through. I don't need mm -hmm. to go through that. But yep. it's... Uh, yeah, $9,000 a person for, for a, a trip of a lifetime. Wow. Uh, it's sensational. So just jump onto moomoocycling.com and uh, uh, look it up and love to see you there. Mm. As I said, the food over in uh, the Giro is just next level. It doesn't matter where you are, it's next level. Now, if you've actually done some work for this show, which is fantastic, you've got a couple of talking points Breaking news around the world of cycling. What do you got for us? <laughs> well, we've got a couple of races start today. I think uh, uh, the Tour of Oman is actually just, they would have fired the gun about uh, half an hour ago, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see Cav uh, back uh, in, in it's his first race back because uh, he hurt himself in the six days. He crashed and uh, uh, broke a, a, a collarbone or something or a wrist, I think, in, in uh, six days. Uh, him versus Gaviria. And uh, young Caden Groves, we'll see how uh, he's going to go. Um I believe it is ready to step up, and I think we'll see him win some quite big events this year because he's a super sprinter. It's just taken him a while to find his his groove, so he, he he's in there. And then, of course, also um, starting today is a Tour de la Provence, which is a fantastic race. Uh, so Carapaz, Ella Philippe, and Quintana uh, all in there, belting away. Uh, so I'm looking forward to those uh, races. But one of the things that uh, popped up overnight we've we've seen a few robberies from team mm. vans and this sort of thing but it's taking the next mm. level now we had uh, a truck driver with a yep yeah, that was that was a truck after with a huge mm. shipment of shimano going to czech republic um and evidently 10 million euro of shimano equipment was stolen from the back of the truck so they evidently they followed him away from the factory until he got to his first to he had to have a rest break and then they gassed while he's having a snooze they gassed the cabin knocked him out well he was unconscious of course because they gassed it and then pinched all the stuff and by the time he woke up they were probably in another country so that's a I reckon it's like a year's supplies they're the biggest one of the biggest bike builders in, in all of Europe this Czech mm. company they built uh, uh, over a million one and a half million bikes they expected to build over the next 12 months and that's going to be a bit tough to do with uh, with no parts to put on it so it's hard enough anyway at this current time but that, that's a yeah. terrible story terrible story We've seen a lot of this feel like bike thefts. You know, it's happening yeah. all the time at races and that. Is it something that, I mean, what do you do to prevent this sort of stuff? Well, well in all honesty, it's, it's not just bike bits now. It's the way the world is going. I mean, inflation is surging. In 
what in the region where I live, within 10 kilometers where I live, uh, burglaries have doubled of private houses in the last six months. Doubled. People wow. are dumping stuff on the roads, on the streets. Are, are, you, are you having trouble getting rid of it, though, Phil? Uh, no, it's going well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, the world it's the area around where Phil lives. It's the only place that's happening in London, in England. Yeah, but anyway. Used to be very honest where I was, was until I moved in. It's, it's changed since then. No, life is changing in many, many ways. But uh, we, we all know with the teams how, how careful they are. They, they know mm. that they're a hit tar uh, target. And they back the van so close together against walls, brick walls, so you can't get in through the doors, etc. cetera, uh, when you're on the events. Some of them have got security guards now, which stay with the vehicles through the night. Um, just where, where will it end? We're becoming quite a, quite a tyrannical world, I think, in many, many ways. I but you were just talking... Go on. Mm. The Green Edge Service Force got robbed a couple of times, and at one point did. they came in through the roof. That's like right. Mission Impossible style. So, right. you know, they'll yeah. stop at nothing. They're getting crafty. Like, oh. Well, they did yeah. that with one of the team trucks. They backed up against a, a, another truck. So they're two trucks together. And they just, like, like, like mm. a can opener, they just opened the roof and took everything out through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> well, another example of, of what's going on, my neighbour, uh, who has a small BMW car, parked at the railway station about 10k away. When he came back from the office to the station to pick up his car, the catalytic converter had been grinded off. It was gone. It turned the wow. engine on. It sounded like he was driving a rocket ship. He looked underneath, and there's no converter there. So he calls the police. First of all, the camera is flooded. The car park is flooded with cameras. Uh, the station didn't want to know because the car park's operated by somebody else. Um, so they're not even checking the cameras. They call the police. The police say, "Well, don't do, don't drive the car. Whatever you do." They say, "Well, I need to get home. I'll do it at uh, 30k an hour." And then he said, uh, the police told him uh, a big white van will have arrived. Men will have gone out with grinders uh, in broad daylight, middle of the day. Nobody sees this going on. The police says it takes approximately 60 seconds to grind through the pipes and to remove the catalytic converter. The problem is they may have written the car off at the same time because the, the grinder could have gone into the base of the engine or the chassis and damaged both because they don't care. I mean... They shouldn't believe what's going on at the moment. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But listen, while we're, talking about the, while we're talking about the future, I mean, I, I was at lunch yesterday with a commentator, uh, Adam Blyde, in fact, who works with me on the Tour de France. First time I've seen him in the flesh, actually. I've only ever talked to him on the, oh, okay. on, on the airwaves. And he was, he was a guest speaker at this lunch. And we good were talking Friday. afterwards about a very good bike rider, Lotto Zidal, when he retired, mm. and a teammate of Caleb's, and he spoke very mm. nice. Greenwich, yeah. Uh, well, and he, indeed. Um, anyway, he was a British champion. He's now, he, actually, he's a natural commentator, and he was telling me how much he wants to work with me next year as a commentator, but I'm not sure what can make it work. But anyway, it's another story. But he was telling me, because he's on the inside a little bit with the situation regarding the crash of Aegon Bernal, Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, you can't say too much, but at the end of the day, he, obviously, Egan Bernal apparently slammed into the back of that stationary bus in excess of 60 kilometers an hour. He did wow. not see it at all. He just was on full speed as he plowed in. Yep. And, and Adam said he was extremely lucky not to die. Simple mm -hmm. as that. As we know, his injuries have been horrendous. Uh, it's going to be a long haul. I do believe Egan will come back but it's going to be a long haul. But the, what he was saying was uh, he was riding his time trial bike and he was practicing his streamlined racing position. Uh, so, and because of the UCI regulations, which don't allow certain positions, they've adapted a new position of the head and the body going lower over the handlebars while still being legal in the lying down position. And the chances are he was actually in such a streamlined position, he wasn't even looking where he was going. Now, mm -hmm. that's pure supposition. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that sounds like he just rode straight into a bus that was stopped in front of him because he was practicing his time trial position. But either way, I think we all agree, if you hit a stationary object and you don't know it's coming, you have a bad yeah. crash. And that's what he had. It was great to see some photos of him uh, after the operation actually standing up, which surprised me. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So these guys have seen history repeat yeah. itself. They're made of rubber. Yeah. I've, I've said it on television. Yeah. These guys are made of rubber. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also you can understand why the UCI have these restrictions because if particularly mm -hmm. younger people see 
riders doing that and they go out and do it on the roads exactly. like accidents can exactly happen. so exactly yeah, yeah. It's a safety thing yeah. as well yeah yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Much so. it was a big mistake that's for sure yeah. Yeah. yeah uh anything you want to add before we wrap things up lads no i'll be tuning into the tour of provence which starts today and Adam Blythe is commentating, I believe, so that'll be mm. fun. You've been yes. getting into the Winter Olympics, Phil. How's the UK Well, going? Well, uh, Channel 7 did invite me to work on them, but I felt that uh, the night shift from London for about 10, 10 or 12 days would have worn me out before the season started. So I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't go forward with that one. But I've been watching them. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a bit strange for me. Watching uh, I, Olympic games. I, I, I've been so, loving it actually. Yeah, I, it. It, it's mm. funny, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, Olympics drags you into watching sports you don't normally watch, even mm. in the normal. Yeah, I look. I think all these yeah. new modern sports are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you who's been doing a very good. Scotty McGrory has been doing a great job. In, yeah, on the mm. speed skating. And he did uh, some of it with uh, um, saving Bradbury. Uh, Bradbury, they've been yeah. really good together, but but he's been a standout. Uh, but I just love some this of that good. half half pike stuff. You see, they, they go 30, 40 <laughs> feet in the air after they come out of the there. damn pike. It's just amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm. No, I love it. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, uh, ski jumpers look as though they're flying through the sky, but they're never more than about three meters above the ground, you know. But these yeah. guys are even higher than ski jumpers. Yeah. I've yeah, seen you 30, 40 feet in the air at Alp the Wes at about three in the morning, Iffy. <laughs> <laughs> no drama yeah, at all. You were right in the wheel, if I remember rightly, mate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And just on that side up for yeah. Moo Moo Cycling Tours. Yeah, it's, well, look, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm just so excited to be able to get back to Europe. Uh, and, uh, you know, things are starting to. Um, look a bit brighter uh, yeah. in, in Europe at the moment, which is great. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. And so I'll be doing the, the well, whole journey. As, uh, as of this morning, uh, the, our British Prime Minister, bless him, is announcing uh, that he is hoping to relieve all COVID restrictions in their entirety by the end of the month. So, yeah, no so we can have problem. parties. So we, can <laughs> have, we, can, we can have parties and we can all catch the, uh, the, the virus and it won't matter. Well, I think yeah, Morris wants those things. parties back big time. <laughs> I just got a, a, a text from uh, Brett Lancaster, who's yeah. uh, DSing de Ineos uh, at oh, Provence. He yes. says, I'm watching live from Provence. Well, that's great. great. But well, give us some information. Bert, come on. on and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us Send give him a link, my mate. Uh, yes. uh, Karen wants to say hi to Trish, <laughs> Phil, and she yes, wants she to also hi ask. Back. She says hi back. She's just gone through the door. Uh, she broke she's... her dancing shoes last night, which she only paid three hundred dollars for after about oh, a week. Geez. So she's gone to get a spare pair. So she's gone home. Oh. But Karen also says, "Phil, you'll be able to tune into the Michelin Tour of Gippsland, Ooh. which we're on SBS on demand on Tuesday, fifteenth of Feb, and also we're going to be doing a live show. We mentioned it on Tuesday with the chat with Caleb uh, Sunday and Monday night on SBS Cycling Central Facebook page at seven thirty PM Australian Eastern Standard Time." And that's with Matty Keenan that. and Dave McKenzie. So he'll be they'll be wrapping all the action for the first three days, and then it's going to be streaming Kino live Macca. online. Yeah, yep. it sounds like a solicitor firm, doesn't it? Keno and Macca. And um, yeah. I should look forward to watching it because I've got a VPN connection. So that's great. Perfect. I've just well, sent you... you a photo from uh, which is the uh, um, the start. Yeah, and you put me under the pump here. <laughs> Bert just sent me a picture of the today start ramp. Uh, for Provence. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> oh, wow. I never, I never cease to be amazed by the technicalities of television these days. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, no, I can't, I can't ingest it. Sorry, okay. if you, we'll have to All save right. that. Well, uh, no worries. Thanks for joining us, Phil. Massive thanks to Sarah Giganti. Lovely. There um, it is. Yeah, there's Sarah, a photo. Sarah, oh, there we are. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, fantastic. Oh. And, Good. you know, Provence is a magical place. I love Provence. Oh. Look at the blue skies. Rose A in Provence. They're it's, in the uh, winter and it's still perfect. got blue skies. It's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Well, on that, it's just about Rose o'clock. If he... well, it is <laughs> for you. It's good. coffee o'clock for me. It's Heineken o'clock. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, anyway, fellas. A long day thanks ahead. to Sarah okay, Gigante. Boys, all, yeah. And uh, tune in to Tour of, the Michelin Tour of Gippsland this weekend. It's going to be a great event. Absolutely. Looking It'll be sensational. To and uh, uh, next week, we're going to do a preview uh, of the Melbourne uh, Warnable and yeah. the Women's Warning. warning. Uh, and we're going to get um, um, we'll get one of the guys. You know what we should do? 
we should get the make it a family affair because uh, Brett and Jones one of the favourites for mm. it, so we should get Britain on. And uh, Mum's running the whole show, and without there Karen Jones, there would not be a women's warning. She has done an amazing job to get that across the line. So yep. we should get the, the 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 family Jones on. And being uh, Dan Jones in the in the pilot chair, you know, got to be a connection there somewhere. Well, I'm going to be working with Lucy Jones now with the Western United Footy Club. So there's a connection there as well. There you uh, go. It's all the happening. World, the, the world it's is getting very It's going to be the Melbourne. Jones episode next week. You're yep. the boss, Iffy. <laughs> you say, Let's do it. All right. See you again That's next good. week, guys. All Thanks, right. Phil. Take it easy. All the best. Bye. Go well. See you, bud. Bye. This is the winning ride of the Tour de France.